It's a simple pill that's been used to treat people infected with scabies in the Pacific Islands for years. The drug ivermectin is at the heart of an ambitious plan on Elko Island to rid one community of the itchy infectious mite. The Menzies School of Health Research is hoping it will also wipe out the strongyloides worm that can strike down people already suffering from chronic diseases. Menzies is training 15 Elko Island health researchers to explain the medical benefits and privacy implications of a clinical study that's more complex than it looks. Rick Hind reports. Just over 500 kilometres east of Darwin, the small community of Galawinku on Elko Island has signed up for a complex scientific trial. It's a huge study and community treatment program involving the 2,500 local residents. We've planned for 80% of people to, to get involved. Overall, we're looking to try to reduce the amount of scabies and the amount of strongyloides that's circulating within the community. So if we can actually prove that treating a whole community with a mass drug administration is an effective way to reduce the prevalence of both these endemic diseases, then what we will find we'll be able to roll it out in other communities. For decades, the scabies mite has been a scourge in Indigenous populations across the Northern Territory. They know that 7 out of 10 kids have scabies in the first year of life because people see those little bubs with that beautiful skin and not long after they're born, usually around two months of age, you start to see kids turning up with scabies. Childhood scabies infections can have a long-lasting and devastating effect, with links to rheumatic heart disease later in life. Source caused by scabies make a pathway for bacteria called strep A to get into the body. Group A strep is, is in really, really high amounts in Aboriginal communities. So that sore gets infected with the group A strep, um, which can then go on to cause damage to your heart and to your kidneys. And while scabies can be effectively treated with a cream that's left on overnight, there's a big drawback. People were reluctant to use it. So unless you had scabies, um, then we found that people in the households were, weren't happy to put the cream on. And scabies isn't the only parasitic infection troubling Indigenous populations. The strongyloides worm is also believed to be prevalent in top-end communities and in some cases it can be fatal. For those people who do get immunosuppressed, um, they're the ones at greatest risk of developing um, hyperinfective disease uh, which has a really high fatality rate. This is the pill that researchers from Menzies School of Health Research hope will be the ultimate weapon in the battle against both scabies and strongyloides. Ivermectin, also known by the brand name Stromectol, has been used to treat scabies on the Solomon Islands for more than a decade. Researchers here believe it has the potential to cure strongyloides as well. We know that Ivermectin is a very safe drug. It's been given to millions of people and it has very minimal side effects. <laughs> Scabies come poyak miwiri yako strongaloides. On Elko Island, locals are being trained as health researchers in preparation for a clinical trial that'll treat most of the population with ivermectin. They're also being shown how to identify scabies and strongaloides and how they're easily passed from one person to the next in overcrowded houses. This trial aims to wipe out the two infections. Ivermectin medicine kills scabies mites and strongyloids in our body. But Menzies is stressing that not everyone has to take part. That when you go to talk to people at their homes and tell them about it, it's important that people know that they don't have to be involved. It's just one reason why there's a need for homegrown indigenous health workers. Sometimes they don't listen to white people. They just ignore you. So it's very important that this is in, yes. in your language. Yes, so you, they will understand the language. To help explain the complex process of treating scabies, elders from Galawinku have linked the project to an ancient story about the cycad nut, a poisonous fruit that needs a series of steps to make it edible. It's a poison cycad and, and we usually do by... Pro process by doing 
that bit and after that bit and you know all the positions we get rid of the position and so the community is saying we know that type of process now we've got a process that we want to go through to try to see what do we need to do to remove scabies and strongloides or scabies and worms from our community and again there's a series of steps there's a process to work through for the past two months, health workers have been going door to door to ensure people understand what's involved in the study. A battery of blood, urine and faeces tests to find out who's infected with the parasites, accompanied by the first batch of the pill for everyone who signs up, infected or not. And it's only those that do have scabies and strongyloides will receive a second treatment two to three weeks later. There'll be follow-up doses at six months and a year later and the hope is to suppress both parasites to the point where outbreaks can be stamped out one by one. But there is a catch. Children under 15 kilograms or about three years of age and pregnant women won't be able to take ivermectin and will have to use the old method, the cream. Menzies researchers say that will require pregnancy tests for all women involved in the study, from the age of 12 to 45. So that was... Um a point that we discussed very early on and very clearly that if there's going to be pregnancy testing involved and if it's going to involve testing of young females under 16 that if a, if a female is found to be pregnant then there is a legal responsibility to report that. Family and children's services would have to be informed if a girl submits to a pregnancy test. So if a 13 year old girl um, chooses not to have that urine test that's her decision and that's done privately with her um, with in a very secure environment. Each stage of the process from gathering information to informed consent to testing to the method of treatment will be kept strictly confidential and conducted in a private place. It'll be two years till the study is complete but the community is hoping they'll soon see the first fruits of a long and complex process to rid the island of scabies and strongyloides. And hopefully we can make a big difference not only in Galawinku but in other Aboriginal communities in Australia, many communities and other island communities around the area as well in Asia and Pacific. So we might be able to help other people as well as helping ourselves here. Rick Hind with that story.